Hey Exodus, my name is JP, if you didn't know me. Um, I am a college intern at the church this summer. I was in Exodus a few years back, but uh, yeah, now I get to work with Steve and Jackson this summer and uh, just help out uh, and do whatever is needed and I get to do some Sunday school lessons. So I'm looking forward to this. I wish we could meet in person. I hope you guys are all are staying healthy and safe and I really hope that we will get to see each other before the summer is over. Um, yeah, so, um, today I want to talk briefly about um, a theme that is in scripture and uh, that theme is reconciliation. Uh, we hear that a lot and that term often, at least recently in our culture, um, and we hear it in church quite a bit, but I just wanted to look at a short passage and um, just share some reflections on it, um, share some of what I've learned uh, over the past year in college with you guys. So, yeah, um, to begin, I guess it would be helpful to just figure out what we're talking about with reconciliation. Um, like I said, we hear it a lot, but uh, I think we should nail down what we're talking about. Um, I see reconciliation as the restoration of a broken relationship. Uh, I think we have to reconcile a lot in our lives. I mean, we probably uh, had to get reconciled with someone uh, last week or yesterday. I don't know. We we often get into disagreements with others. We we uh, get in a fight with someone. We get angry at someone or someone gets angry at us or we are uh, disobedient to our parents and they are mad at us or just something like that we our relationship with someone is broken maybe we lost trust with someone or we did something that made uh, someone else lose trust with us and our relationship is broken um, it isn't how it should be and um, since it's broken, it needs to be reconciled uh, to be fixed, it, for the relationship to be whole, to be made to be made whole again. There must be reconciliation. Um, why do we need reconciliation? Well, we need it because we are all broken beings. Um, we are all sinners. We all we will all hurt someone at some point. And just because that's who we are, that's how, that's due to our sinful nature. Um, um, and I, it, it goes beyond just our relationship with others, but reconciliation is needed with all of our relationships. Our, I mean, think about the Garden of Eden, um, our relationship with, or Adam and Eve's, and therefore our relationship is broken with ours. Um, uh, as bro <laughs> sorry, um, Adam and Eve's relationship with God is broken. Adam and Eve's relationship with each other is broken. Adam and Eve's relationship with the environment is broken. And Adam and Eve's relationship with their own self is broken. And we are exactly the same as they are. I mean, we are descendants of them. And therefore, each of us needs reconciliation. Um... And each of us yearns for reconciliation. We recognize that the world is not how it should be, that things aren't happening the way they were designed to be because of the fall, because of sin. Um, so we yearn for reconciliation. and That is why the reconciliation that God provides through Jesus Christ is so important and something I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to read a short part of 2 Corinthians 5, verses uh, 16 through 21. It says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespass trespasses against them and trusting to us the message of reconciliation therefore we are ambassadors for Christ God making his, his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God yeah so um, I don't know in my, in my Bible the there's the title that they added is the ministry of reconciliation and that's really what I want to talk about is the ministry of reconciliation that um, is in these verses because that applies to each of us we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation and we are all called to be ambassadors for Christ so what does that mean um, and I mean, I think it means a lot, and I'm not going to be able to go over all of that. I don't think I know all of it yet. Um, but last year, um, my um, I had a class that was really about what reconciliation meant, um, especially in regards to poverty alleviation. But we read a book that I think is really uh, helpful here, and something that I just wanted to share a few points with you guys. It's called... Um, reconciling all things and yeah I just want to share three points with you that I um, was able to take from the book that were helpful to me in my understanding of the ministry of reconciliation um, point number one is um, before reconciliation is about us it is about God um, it's about what God has done in Christ first what God has done in Jesus first um, without Jesus transformation in ourselves and others in the world is impossible without Jesus any reconciliation is impossible any true reconciliation is impossible so it's just important that we don't misread the story of the kingdom of God which is coming um, and bring ourselves in the picture too quickly. Um, what I mean by that is, I, I, what I'm, I guess I just mean that foremost it is uh, about God and it is God's mission. Reconciliation is not the goal of human striving, but it is instead the gift that God longs, um, really desires for us to accept. And it's not like we are including God in our mission for reconciliation, but God is including us and lets us participate in his mission of reconciliation. And I just think that's so important as we, in these times where, I mean, there's the coronavirus and um, just uh, calls for justice, especially in terms of uh, racial justice, that we remember uh, God through all of this. Um, my second point um, is Christian reconciliation is horizontal and vertical. So this is um, another thing that I have learned more of that I, we, we've talked about reconciliation and I think oftentimes we think of reconciliation as just really reconciling ourselves our personal selves with God. It's a personal restoration um, to having a right relationship with God. And yes, I mean, this restoration is at the heart of reconciliation. And I think all reconciliation is an outpouring of our own um, restored relationship with God. But there is more to reconciliation um, in verse um, in verse um, um, I don't know uh, but I have it written down um, it says in one of the verses in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself the whole world is being restored through Jesus and 
God's kingdom is coming and the transformation that it brings involves every aspect of our lives and every aspect of the world changing and being renewed, being transformed. It's changing everything and everything is being reconciled through Christ. Um, and for Christians that means uh, the ministry of reconciliation we should care about um, care about it all care about fighting for justice uh, care about alleviating poverty care care about the environment um, care about protecting life um, care about healing people from sicknesses of of, of bringing uh, God's peace uh, throughout the world all of this stuff is God's mission for, for reconciliation we shouldn't think too small when we think of reconciliation it's big it's big and this is what God calls us into this is what he lets us participate in and that goes into my last point um, uh, which is reconciliation starts small in the everyday and within ourselves uh, I want to read a short uh, quote from reconciling all things uh, it says, if Christians believe anything, it is that no one, including ourselves in the church, is separate from the brokenness as an untainted solution to the problems of our world. The new creation contends with the old. The dividing line between good and evil runs straight through each one of us, so the journey of reconciliation begins with transformation of the human person. Grounded in God's gift of the new creation, a Christian vision insists that reconciliation is ultimately about the transformation of the everyday, a quiet revolution that occurs over time in everyday people, everyday congregations, everyday communities amid the most broken places on God's earth. Um, yeah, so... A Christian vision of reconciliation is in the everyday. We can't think about it one day and just forget about it the next. Or when it's not, it's not cool to think about reconciliation anymore. We we should still be thinking about. It. We should still be working for it. Um, it happens in the everyday in consistency and sustainability. Um, and it only happens through faithfulness in Jesus in, uh, in the everyday. If we expect uh, change tomorrow in ourselves and in the world, we'll, we will be disappointed because it, it takes time. It takes waiting in it. I, I really like how it talks about reconciliation as a quiet revolution because I think that's so important. Um, God often brings reconciliation uh, through planting seeds, small seeds of hope um, that that grow into something greater that um, that that change the world, that usher in uh, the kingdom of God that is coming. So those were my thoughts. I think reconciliation is so important, and I encourage you to to think about what reconciliation means uh, for you and for this world. And I encourage you to be praying for reconciliation and to take active steps towards reconciliation. Um, because that is what God calls us to. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you guys soon soon in person uh, hopefully we get to meet uh, at some point uh, that's all I got thanks bye